Hello, I'm Ken Johnson, and welcome to the New Hope Reads Ministry. We hope you will visit daily as we read from the Chronological Bible. May our time spent together in God's Word be a blessing to us all as God reveals Himself and His nature, as He opens our minds, and as He prepares our hearts for our good and His service. Again, thank you for joining us. December 13th, drawing close to God, James 4, 1 through 10. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure, you idolaters. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate and the spirit has placed within us should be faithful to him. And he gives grace generously. As the scriptures said, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter, and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up in honor. Warning Against Judging Others, James 4, verses 11 and 12. Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone, who gave the law, is the judge. He alone has the power to save or to destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Warning about self-confidence, James 4, 13 through 17. Look here, you who say, today or tomorrow, we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It is here a little while, and then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own pretentious plans, and all such boasting is evil. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Warning the Rich James 5, 1 through 6. Look here, you rich people. Weep and groan with anguish because of all the terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away, and your fine clothes are moth-eaten rags. Your gold and silver are corroded. 
The very wealth you were counting on will eat away your flesh like fire. This corroded treasure you have hoarded with will testify against you on the day of judgment. Or listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay. The cries of those who harvest your fields have reached to the ears of the Lord of heaven's armies. You have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourselves for the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed innocent people who do not resist you. Pleasure and Suffering James 5 7 through 12. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. You too must be patient. Take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. For examples of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance, you can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end, for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. But most of all, my brothers and sisters, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no, so that you will not sin and be condemned. The Power of Prayer, James 5 13 through 18. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. If you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was a human, as we are, and yet he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall and none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky set down rain, and the earth began to yield its crops. Restore Wandering Believers, James 5, 19 and 20. My dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings a sinner back from wandering will save that person from death and bring about forgiveness of many sins. Greetings from Paul, 1 Timothy 1 and 2. This letter is from Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus appointed by the command of our Savior, our Lord, and Jesus Christ, who gives us hope. I am writing to Timothy, my true son in the faith. May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. Warnings Against False Teaching, 1 Timothy 1, 3-11. When I left for Macedonia, I urged you to stay there in Ephesus and stop those teaching whose teaching is contrary to the truth. 
Don't let them waste their time in endless discussion of myths and spiritual pedigrees. These things only lead to meaningless speculations, which don't help people live a life of faith in God. The purpose of my instruction is that all believers will be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. But some people have missed this whole point. They have turned away from these things and spend their time in meaningless discussions. They want to be known as the teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they are talking about, even though they speak so confidently. We know that the law is good when used correctly, for the law was not intended for people who do what is right. It is for people who are lawless and rebellious, who are ungodly and sinful, who consider nothing sacred and defile what is holy, who kill their father or mother and commit other murders. The law is for people who are sexually immoral or who practice homosexuality or are slave traders, liars, promise breakers, or do anything else that contradicts the wholesome teaching that comes from the glorious good news entrusted to me by our blessed God. Paul's gratitude for God's mercy. 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 17. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength to do his work. He considered me trustworthy and pointed me to serve him, even though I used to blaspheme the name of Christ. In my insolence, I persecuted his people. But God had mercy on me because I did it in ignorance and unbelief. Oh, how generous and gracious our Lord was. He filled me with the faith and love that comes from Christ Jesus. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinners. And then others will realize that they, too, can believe in him and receive eternal life. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal king, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. Amen. Timothy's Responsibility. 1 Timothy 1, 18 through 20. Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. May they keep you fight well and may they help you fight well in the Lord's battles. Cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their conscience, and as a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. Hymenius and Alexander are two examples. I threw them out and handed them over to Satan so they might learn not to blaspheme God. Instructions about worship. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 15. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peacefully and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man, Jesus Christ. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world just at the right time. And I have been chosen as a preacher 
and apostle to teach the Gentiles this message about faith and truth. I am not exaggerating, just telling the truth. In every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands lifted up to God, free from anger and controversy. And I want women to be modest in their appearance. They should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair or by wearing gold and pearl or expensive clothes. For women who claim to be devoted to God should make themselves attractive by the good things they do. Women should learn quietly and submissively. I do not let women teach men or have authority over them. Let them listen quietly, for God made Adam first, and afterward he made Eve. And it was not Adam who was deceived by Satan. The woman was deceived, and sin was the result. But the woman will be saved through childbearing, assuming they continue to live in faith and love, holiness, and modesty. May God bless the reading of the Scripture. Hi there, and welcome to New Hope Reads. I'm Mark Roof, and we are delighted that you've joined us to share in the reading of God's Word. It's very important that we share this together and be in God's Word daily. And by the way, we'd like to invite you to join us here at New Hope Church of Christ anytime you get a chance. Sunday mornings, we have classes at 930. We have worship at 1030. And you can join us live or online. Have a blessed day.